Insignificant water pressure is a problem encountered in a variety of commercial buildings. This film will give you an understanding of the basic principles of pressure boosting and introduce you to some of the most common solutions. Let's begin by looking at the very basics of boosting. A booster set is made up of a booster pump and a control. Its purpose is to increase water pressure to ensure that everyone in the building has optimum comfort. Imagine a tall building. Without pressure boosting, the water pressure will inevitably decrease as the water travels up the floors, leaving the people on the top floor with little or no pressure in the taps. The need for pressure boosting could also arise following a renovation of a building block where every flat has been equipped with a dishwasher. Often, the addition of new appliances will lead to extra pressure on the water supply at specific times during the day, which will inevitably affect the pressure in the taps. A third scenario is a building placed on a hilltop. Even if there is only one storey, the water will lose its pressure on its way up the hill. In all these cases, the water pressure from the public water supply is simply not high enough to ensure sufficient pressure throughout the building in question. You need pressure boosting, so let's take a look at the options. The two most common pressure boosting solutions are booster pumps with start-stop functionality and booster pumps with variable speed. Let's take a look at them individually, beginning with the start-stop solution. With a start-stop solution, the booster pump starts and stops according to a predefined cut-in and cut-out pressure. And how do you define that? The first step is to calculate the building's required minimum pressure in order to be able to set the start-stop level. Let's take a 25-storey building, equal to 105 metres as an example. Say you need the minimum pressure on the top floor to be 3 bar, equal to 30 metre water column. The start level must then be at least 13.5 bar and the stop level approximately 14.5 bar. To reduce the pressure on the lower floors, pressure relief valves must be fitted on the riser pipe. Otherwise, the pressure on the ground floor will be equal to the stop level, in this case 14.5 bar, which is far too high. In buildings that are maximum 50 meters high, pressure relief valves may not be necessary. Now, let's leave the start-stop solution and turn to the alternative, the booster pump with variable speed. The booster pump with variable speed is a more advanced solution designed to deliver sufficient, constant pressure in an energy-efficient way. Let's look at a building block. Typically, there is a huge demand for water in the morning, but once everyone has gone to work, the demand falls significantly until people return or until, for instance, a restaurant on the ground floor opens for lunch. The booster pump with variable speed will automatically adjust to the changes in the pattern to keep energy consumption as low as possible. So how do you make the booster set do that? Well, once you have calculated the building's load profile, you simply define a pressure set point. The pump will then maintain the same pressure at all times, but will, during periods of reduced water consumption, like during the day or at night, reduce the speed to save energy. At very low flow demands, the pump will even have the possibility to stop altogether to use no energy at all. Note that the pressure on the lower levels might also here require the fitting of pressure relief valves. So, having looked at the basics of pressure boosting and the most common solutions, let's recap. Pressure boosting is applied where the pressure from the public water supply is not enough to provide an entire building with sufficient pressure. The two most common booster solutions are start-stop and variable speed, both of which will enable you to provide your customers with comfort in the shape of sufficient pressure in taps, showers and appliances.